WNBA player Brittany Griner was back in a Russian courtroom today. That's right. Her lawyers tried to make the case for leniency, saying she unintentionally had medical marijuana while traveling through a Moscow airport. Earlier this month, Griner pleaded guilty to drug charges. She was caught with hash oil cartridges in her luggage in February. Griner's lawyers argue the drugs were prescribed by a doctor. They also noted she tested negative for marijuana use. Still, marijuana is illegal in Russia, and Griner could face up to 10 years in prison. For more on all this, CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayeb joins us now. MTS, can you explain why Griner's lawyers are trying to get the point across that she was prescribed medical marijuana? And were they successful in making their case before this Russian audience? Lana, Tanya, very good to talk to you. Well, look, it was a very interesting day in court. Uh, not only uh, did uh, we hear from her lawyers, but we also heard from some experts. But really what uh, we have to remember here is, as you rightly pointed out in your introduction, is that uh, this is a, a woman who's facing up to 10 years in prison because cannabis and cannabis products are, of course, illegal in Russia. And the thing is, what we understand is that, um, or rather what we heard in the court is that we heard from her legal defense, which has made it clear throughout this whole time that she did not intend to break any Russian laws by packing these vape cartridges carrying what's been described as either ha cannabis or hash oil. Uh, but we also heard from a Russian narcotics scientist who was called in or called to the stand today where he said it was, quote, a fact that American doctors will sometimes prescribe cannabis products, including for chronic pain, which is something that Griner says that she suffers from. Now, how successful these arguments will be? Well, we just don't know. We have to remember this case has been dragging out for months now. You may remember that Griner was arrested just days before Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which was all the way back in February, and this case is still ongoing, and she's still behind bars. And so while it's certainly uh, very convincing the arguments that we've heard, whether it's convincing enough for a Russian judge, well, we still don't know that. Mm -hmm. MMTS cross-examination by the prosecution is expected to start tomorrow. What can we anticipate from them and how much will sort of the larger geopolitical situation factor into this trial? Very interesting question. Yes, we are very likely to hear from Brittany Griner herself. She's expected to give te uh, testimony and be cross-examined as well. Uh, we also understand that the defense is likely to rest its case later this week. Now, what we don't know is um, really when we're going to hear any kind of verdict or any kind of sentencing. Remember, uh, Griner has uh, admitted guilt in carrying this, but what she has said is that it was a mistake, that she did not intend to bring these to the country that, you know, she was packing and she put all this stuff in her bag and hadn't realized it was there and is very apologetic of this mistake that she's made, but it was a mistake. Uh, we, of course... Uh know that, again, that in Russia, that uh, any kind of possession of, of cannabis uh, is illegal and, as we've been saying, faces the potential of 10 years in prison. Whatever the case, the Russian legal system does note that in the final stages of any kind of case, Griner will be given another opportunity to speak. This is being described as a, quote, final word, which will be her last chance to address the court about the charges, where we will very likely hear again this apology from her uh, and perhaps more specifically, the kind of leniency that uh, she's certainly hoping for, uh, for this admission of guilt. But as we've been saying, there are many concerns for her. Her supporters have warned that she, an openly black, uh, sorry, an openly gay black woman, could face legal bias in a country with a long history of racism and discrimination against the LGBTQ community. But as you rightly point out, the geopolitical side of things are a bit more complicated as well. Her supporters, along with many other leading athletes and some politicians say that she's being held in Russia as a political pawn, uh, that because uh, Russia invaded Ukraine so shortly after she was arrested that she has become this useful tool as relations between Moscow and Washington worsen. Uh, there's even some suggestion that she could be used uh, or seen uh, by the Kremlin as uh, someone who could be uh, at part of a prisoner swap. Uh, 
again, no real clarity on whether that is going to happen. But the Kremlin insists that she is not as the U.S. government puts it, which is that she's wrongfully detained. We've heard from the U.S. government saying that Brittany Griner is wrongfully detained. Uh, Moscow saying that is certainly not the case. And they're saying that their laws must be respected. And so, too, should their legal process. And that is what uh, Brittany Griner is going through right now. Right, many eyes carefully watching this trial. MTS Tayeb in London, thank you so much.